Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And with this one, we've got a major patch update with some big buffs to particularly the Unholy Death Knight. And I think you guys were deserving of some pretty beefy buffs, so all the more to you. Uh, and I will be covering some end game system updates. So how will we be getting conduits in 9.2? How will we be getting our second legendary in 9.2? Because that has been the main discussion of Shadowlands is all of these secondary borrowed powered systems and having to kind of do these endless grinds and what's going on with these items. Have we learned from the iterations in the past moving forward? Or are we going to repeat some of the same mistakes that would likely be frustrating. Those are the types of things that I'm going to be covering in this video. And if you'd like to make sure that you're always up to date with the news and class changes for World of Warcraft to enhance your experience, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'm uploading them here in real time, basically as they happen. So you'll have that news right at your fingertips uh, on demand. But let's just get started here. Let's take a look at the buffs. Let's look at some of the good things that are happening in this most recent update and look at them right here for Death Knights. Like, you got like a chunky paragraph right here. Abomination limb, Necrolord ability damage increased by 20%. And you are now going to be having that secondary legendary increasing its damage as well. That abomination limb is going to be pretty uh, scary with those slappy hands running around in this next patch. Uh, then we are going to be looking, we're skipping the rune carving power here um, because I believe that this is from... Uh, just from Torghast. So Convocation of the Dead, which is a conduit, will now reduce the cooldown of Apocalypse by one second. I think this is up from half of a second. Per Festering Wound Burst at all ranks, and now also increases Festering Wound's damage by 15%. So that's going to be a nice increase to your overall damage, bringing the cooldown of your Apocalypse down as well. So you're going to be getting some pretty big buffs all around here to your burst damage to your sustained damage you're also going to see the eternal hunger conduit increase your minions damage by six percent up from three percent so we're seeing a lot of doubling going on uh embrace death conduit now will cause sudden do doom to increase death cold damage by 40 percent up from 35 percent and brutal grass conduit will increase the abomination limb damage by 30 percent was 15 percent so your Abomination is going to be doing a lot of damage. You've got a bunch of sustained damage in here. And these are the type of changes that I saw coming in for things like the Beast Mastery Hunter that has put it in such this like insane position right now in the game. And it feels amazing to play, right? So if they can keep taking this type of approach to the other specs that are kind of like the underdogs, not really represented as much um, and really not really competitive at the moment, I think that we might see all of the specs eventually get into that position because this is looking very similar to that. This is making Death Knight look very scary in this recent round of updates so if you're a death knight player and you were kind of on the fence like and i don't see anything in 9.2 for me doesn't look like the patch for me this one seemed to be paying pretty close attention to you have to wait and see when it actually plays out but there's these are some pretty big numbers right like doubling on conduits doubling on baseline abilities lots of cooldown reduction to get more sustained damage out very similar gameplay to the Beast Mastery Hunter. So I am excited to see this. I think it's something that Death Knights wanted to see in a game, in the game as a whole. Um, there was some debate going on as to whether or not Ashen Hollow has buffed or nerfed. Right now, it seems like um, it's not changing uh, with this, this change that's listed here. Um, and I've covered these other changes in a recent video. So if you'd like to see those, I'll have them linked at the end of this video. But as far as Affliction and Demonology and Destruction, these aren't necessarily new uh, to this update. The only other major kind of new update uh, in this recent for class ones was the soulbind conduits and kind of root effects in general so for the vent there the basically the auto root right when you burst somebody down low health they auto root everybody around them that is now going to break on damage um, and the same goes for the restoration shaman uh, root effects uh, will now cause it to break on damage as well so a couple of extra roots binding shot seems to still have been uh, left alone but these ones particularly could could mix some things up here because I know a lot of times you kind of run away from those moments where somebody gets rooted and you're still hitting them without even knowing it doesn't break and that root can be particularly frustrating. Um, so having it break on damage is going to be a pretty big nerf um, to specifically uh, the Venthyr Covenant. But now that we've covered the class changes, it was mostly just Death Knight. Let's be real here. Um, actually, there was one other one we can cover, which was for Rogue. And this was a bonus that I talked about in a previous video, but it, it has now changed. Um, your shiv is now only going to increase the damage by 40% on your poisons and bleeds, down from 100%. So this is, again, with all of the active tuning that's going on with the game. Uh, I wouldn't imagine that any of these numbers are guaranteed to sit where they are. And when I first saw this for Assassination, I was thinking like 100% is a lot of extra damage. Uh, and that was already now brought down to 40%. 
So they're always constantly tuning these things, but I do really like the approach that they have been taking for the classes um, that's been more focused on sustained damage, like some of the Demon Hunter set bonuses, now with this recent round of buffs to Unholy Death Knights. If they can keep doing that with the specs, man, like all the specs are going to get into a really fun position uh, at the moment in the game. So I'm do hoping that they keep it up with that regard. Now we got to start talking about some stuff that I don't necessarily agree the most with because I didn't think that this is how things would roll out. Uh, and this is the first thing that we're going to talk about here, the Vessel of Profound Possibilities. And as it reads, you're going to use this item. It will increase your attunement to Shadowlands, learning all of the conduits and raising them to an item level of 278, which I'm assuming is the max. Um... Not a, not hundred percent sure, but I'm assuming that that is the max. And this is these are the requirements for it. And when I first read it, I was like, oh my god, yes, this is exactly what they needed to do. It makes so much sense. Like Pog, I'm so happy with this. It's earn a Shadowland Season Three achievement on this character, so it's not account wide. Keystone Hero, so or Gladiator or Mythic Sepulcher are the first ones. So you could pick to do Mythic Dungeons, or you could pick to do PvP, uh, specifically Arena, uh, or you could pick uh, the Sepulcher of the first ones. And you'd be able to focus on that content that you want to focus on and then get these conduits, right? That's how I first read it. And I was thinking, wow, this is going to be great. That's exactly what everybody wanted. I can focus on upgrading the power of my character and the content lane that I want to do. Maybe I do do it all, but I don't have to do it all. And I can stay in my lane and really enjoy the game and just play it the way I want to play it, right? That's, that's what I was hoping was going to have happen. But then you read the bottom part of it requires the enlightened exalted, which is the rep tied to the new zone, which then makes me think that this is almost like Corthia. I, I, in some things is I don't know how long that's going to take. I don't know how time gated this is. I don't know how many quests this is going to be in the new zone. I know that I started doing the campaign to try and my, wake my way to the secondary legendary on the PTR. And I, I kind of gave up on that pretty quickly um, with how long it was taking to just get through the, the initial campaign. So I am very worried now that it requires exalted. I don't know why it can't just be like, and or, you know, like, hey, you're excelling in the raid, now you can get your conduits upgraded. Hey, you're excelling in Mythic Plus, now you get your conduits upgraded. Hey, you're excelling in PvP, conduit upgrades. Or you want to do the rep in the zone, because, okay, and then you can do that as an avenue if you wanted to upgrade your gear. Um, but this is a very big worry uh, for me, because this doesn't seem like it's an improvement right because the, the direction that i thought we were going was again towards more alt friendliness with this current patch that we have this doesn't seem like that because it's only going to be per character that you have and that character is going to need the rep and that character is going to need gladiator to get the conduits as well it's going to be rough to try and get to that point when you don't have them in the first place i do wonder and hope that they're going to put a higher base account wide thing right because now you're getting 200 base at the moment so maybe they bumped the account base to 239 to try and get them you know at least within earshot of 278 because 200 to 278 um is gonna be a pretty big jump but i i was really hoping that this wouldn't be like this i was hoping that, it, that you read the first half and you just think like the perfect that's exactly it just let everybody do what they want but then mm, all right the rep is tied to it um so i'm hoping they'll either add a higher base floor account wide conduits for people so then it's like, oh, it's a small difference um, between getting that. Um, but if it stays at 200, it's going to be a really big problem. And then the second problem, which is not as bad as that, honestly, but is going to be how, how we are getting our second legendary. Uh, and I'll just move myself around here. Uh, the new legendary belt and rune carving power cinch of unity empowered with your current covenants rune carving power that will switch freely alongside your character whenever swapping covenants. Additionally, this new legendary can be equipped alongside another Shadowlands legendary. So we, we already know this. You're going to be able to get a second legendary um, and you're going to be able to equip it. And it's specifically towards your covenant, um, but it's going to require revered which is kind of the thing that that holds this back quite a lot is so your secondary legendary is going to be tied to the rep um, as well as your maximum rank of conduits is going to be tied to the rep. Cosmic Flux is a new currency. Um, and I'm not sure if you're able to get this from anything outside of the zone, but I would then only assume you probably get enough by the time progressing through the zone to at least be able to get this. But again, there's a lot of the, like how much of this is time gated, right? Cause a lot of campaign has been time gated. How much of the rep is time gated? Um, what's going to be going on with this? Am I going to have to come here on every single character if I want to get to those things? Um, was one of my, my main concerns. And I think in somewhere in here, it said that it was going to be account wide. Um, and it will also change depending on when you change your covenant. So you only have to make one. 
So you'll make this legendary. And then if you want to switch covenants, it's the legendary effect will also change, but you'll have to recraft it. You can't use the old one that you have right now. Um, you're going to have to recraft it to be able to get this, to be able to change uh, when you change your covenant. So you may want to hold back on crafting it at this point, although you've, you've got a lot of time, it seems like, um, between that. And I thought that they said something about this being account wide. Um, the both belt and recipe require revered with the enlightened to purchase. The rune carving recipe is the same for all classes, so reaching revered and unlocking it with one character will, will likely allow all characters in your account to craft a secondary legendary. So you can see it's not guaranteed, right? It says character will likely allow all characters in your account to craft your secondary legendary, which is a much bigger deal than the conduits uh, if you have to get to revered on every character. Um, but I'm hoping, again, they either got to increase the base floor of account-wide conduits in the patch if it's going to stay like this or you need exalted because it's probably only going to be one character that you get that, um, at least at the beginning of the patch. So I'm still very worried about it, right? Because there's, there's another thing where now the tier set bonuses, well, not now, it's always been like this, but are only going to be coming from the raid and they're only going to be coming from the vault for an indeterminate amount of time until they introduce a grinding format to be able to grind currency, to be able to get towards those set or to kind of deal with the bad luck protection um, on your tier set bonuses. Those are kind of like the three outstanding things at the moment. This one's a little bit less bad as long as it's account wide. Um, they could they could do the same thing with this conduit upgrade by making it account wide uh, and letting you be able to just get that on your alts. But I really don't see that happening. Um, this legendary, I'm I'm really hoping that this legendary is account wide because if it's not, that's gonna be really really sad. And with the set bonuses, it might just be one of those things where you gotta like you just gotta bite bite the bullet and deal with if you get unlucky and don't get it from the vault, and then later on you're gonna have to grind it out. It seems like that's gonna be the way that it's gonna be at the moment. Um, I would have much rather preferred it to be slightly different, right? Because it seems like we made so much ground. We got the PvP vendor back in Shadowlands. They reworked some stuff to make that gear the best gear in PvP now with all of the different scaling. Seems really good. We just got the account-wide conduits. Uh, seems like they were making things more alt-friendly. Uh, so I'm, I'm really hoping that maybe this is still changeable or they have other things in the back, like I said, with higher base level conduits um, and making sure that this secondary legendary recipe or whatever unlock is available for all of your alts on your account uh, so that you can actually continue to play the game at least in almost a similar fashion as is being played right now for PVP because that seems to be uh, the big turnoff. Uh, and I think even PVEers, uh, I don't want to speak for people, but I feel like they even want to be able to play alts too and get them into the, co the content at a more competitive level. So... Uh, I do hope that that has changed. Again, it's my own opinion. If you share those feelings, then leave a comment down below. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. That's all I've got for you here today. If you'd like to watch me live on twitch.tv slash Subatees, I'm streaming every day. Um, so I always got inter entertaining games over there. Uh, and other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. I will see you in the next one.